can you see where Johnny's coming? He's, he's a thousand what was, what, percent. What did he say? A thousand percent convinced that Joshua would win this rematch. Uh, uh, you can make a case for both fighters. You can't say a thousand percent he's going to win. But he's well, a thousand adamant. percent doesn't really exist. It's percent no, I know that. pro 100. All right, okay. But are you got that much levels of uh, optimism? After what I've witnessed in New York, I'm no longer confident on anything I predict. Easy fight, regardless. I just don't know. I don't yet see how. So uh, the only way I can genuinely see how the win becomes clear is if he adapts the, the way that he fought Joseph Parker. He adapts that long stay away style, but then Ruiz doesn't allow that because Ruiz punches when you punch. Yo, my dance. Make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and obviously hit the bell for notifications. So we just heard there uh, from Tony a la Turncoat Bell you. Now, after the first video I made, I think it was probably well a month or two ago now, initially when AJ lost, Tony the Turncoat Bellend came out and essentially sold AJ down the river. Talking about, oh yeah, Fury is the best heavyweight. And I wouldn't mind, like, I'm all for people having opinions. I really am. Like, if Tony Turncoat had been someone like Carl Froch, Carl Froch has always been a bit hot and cold with AJ. In fact, no, he's always been pretty realistic. Does that make sense? He's never, he hasn't been a fanboy. He hasn't really been a proper friend to AJ. Does that make sense? He's never really come across as a guy who rides with AJ. Does that make sense? Whereas Tony Bellend, Tony Turncoat, he was one for one with AJ. He'd go to AJ's fights and talk about, yeah, that's my big, bro, or sorry, that, that's my little bro. Yeah, AJ this, AJ that. Yeah, he was. I thought Tony Bellend and AJ were like family. Honestly, I did. That's how close I thought they were. So when he started, then he when he started making them comments about oh yeah Fury would Fury would, would do it would fill AJ in and Fury is the best heavyweight I thought mm, that's a bit weird but some people said well it's it's just Bellew's opinion this that the other and I thought okay then maybe maybe I'm reading too much in it maybe Tony the, the Turncoat isn't the case but then we see this most recent interview and this is for me is confirmed that Tony the Turncoat this whole time was a bandwagon Donny and not only a bandwagon Donny. He was one of them dons who, it's almost like, when AJ was winning, he was one of them dons who secretly, secretly didn't like it, but because AJ was winning and was big and was popular, he wanted to be seen with a popular guy. But then when the popular guy loses, he's the first one to kind of get his dagger out and put it in him. When AJ was on top, he was with him, riding with him. I remember categorically Tony, T Tony Turncoat saying AJ would deal with Wilder and Fury in the same night. I remember him saying that, 100%. So I thought, yeah, this is a real, this is a real AJ rider. As in, he was a guy who was with AJ. And some of the, I've, no, I've seen other videos where Tony Turncoat has been proper like, proper brotherly and proper like family with AJ. That's the, that's the kind of vibe I got with him. I thought he was a real dude. But then... That first video, I let slide to an extent. This last one's confirmed it. Tony, the turncoat. Tony, the bandwagon. Don. 100%. And let's get to it. Let's break down what he said. So Coogan says to Tony Turncoat, "Are you how, or how confident are you in AJ beating Ruiz? Or how, how confident are you? And Tony Bellens comments, is, well, what he's, how he answers that question is, uh, you, well, you can make a case for both both fighters, and after what I watched in New York, I'm no longer confident in anything. Which I and it, I thought was a bit muggy. And the first part where he says, "Oh, you can make a case for both fighters," I think that's quite interesting because if you're meant, if someone's your brother, yeah, you should be saying like like. Can you imagine? Let's say um, I don't know, Dylan White's brother. Do you think Dylan White's brother would be saying to Dylan White, "Oh, yeah, well, I can I can see." I can see it going 50-50 with you and Wilder. No, he's going to be saying Dylan White's going to do him. Or, it, or it'll be a good fight, but he's going to win. That's what family, and that's what people who ride with people do. As an example, I ride with AJ. Yes, I can see how he loses the fight, but I'm riding with him. I, I expect him to go in there and be menacing. Does that make sense? From this whole interview, I didn't get any vibe of that from Tony Bellend. He was he was enjoying it. He was enjoying saying, Oh yeah, oh you can make a case with both fighters. Oh, after what after what I watched in New York, I'm not confident in anything anymore. Basically saying, after how how devastating the performance was against Ruiz, he, he hasn't got any hope. <laughs> he he hasn't got any confidence in AJ essentially. Not uh, not one point in his video did Tony Turncoat say all of these things and then say, but I believe in AJ to do it. He was, he was, in, you can tell, look at his eyes. He was enjoy, he was loving the thought of, I don't know, yeah. He was love, he was loving being so, 
being so downbeat on AJ. He was loving it. And I think especially what's, what, what, what's making Tony Turncoat really enjoy this is the fact that his career's over. Look at Lennox Lewis. Since Lennox Lewis has been retired, he's loved taking on AJ. Because they feel like they're missing out. They feel like, oh, they feel like, oh, the spotlight's not on me anymore. So in a minute, when someone like AJ's a bit under it, they love to jump on it. They, they enjoy speculating about someone's downfall. They love it. Listen to him here. Oh, after, oh, after, ah, oh, after what I've watched in New York, I'm not sure, I'm not confident in AJ at all. I'm not confident anything could happen. He's enjoy, he's really like, he's really reveling in it. He's really enjoying it. Which I thought, which I think is really odd. And I'll tell you why I think it's really odd. Take an example. How many times has Derek Chisora lost? How many times has David Price lost? Have you ever seen Tony Turnco ever talk this negatively about David Price or Derek Chisora? No. Whenever they lose, he's like, oh yeah, he'll bounce back. Oh yeah, he's going to do it. Oh yeah, I've got faith in him. David Price, the guy's been chinned a million times, never got to any level. Show me a video of, to of Tony Bellend talking about David Price this way. He doesn't do it. And that's there's a difference for me. He was Tony, Tony Bell, I honestly thought, I used to think that Tony Bellew looked at AJ the same way as he does David Price. He doesn't. He was, he was on the AJ bandwagon whilst it was riding, the minute there was a bit of a chink in the armour, he's enjoyed, he jumped straight off and he's loving it. He's loving He's loving, he, he's loving, and yeah, he's just got, he's got no confidence, isn't he? Tony Bellew has supreme confidence in David Price, backs him all the way, hopes, hopes he wins, hopes he does well. In this video, did you see any hope or well wishes for AJ in this video? And I'm not saying AJ needs him, I'm just highlighting that I hope AJ realises the fake-ass people he's got around him. Because this, this Tony Bell, Bellend guy won't be the only one, bearing in mind as well, AJ literally built Tony Bellend's career. Without AJ, Bellend and Hay or Bellend Hay pay-per-views never would have happened. Not in it, or if they did happen, it would have been, rather than uh, rather than 800,000 buys, it probably would have done 250, I reckon, without AJ around. And whilst it was whilst it was good for Tony, Tony Turncoat's career to be associated with AJ, he was riding it. Now he's out of the game, and he doesn't really need to be associated with anyone. He's more than happy to jump off the bandwagon and be so cynical all of a sudden. Where's all the optimism gone? Because you've got no problem being optimistic about Derek Chisora or David Price. Which, which proves to me that this guy is a definition of a turncoat. Tony to turncoat bellend. Anyway, the next part. And this, get, this for me gets more and more, more and more damning. Because then he answers the question again where we think AJ can win. And he says, oh, I just don't know. Oh, I just don't know. I just don't know. Oh, I just don't see how AJ beats Ruiz. I just don't know yet. I just don't know. I just don't see how AJ beats Ruiz. Like, what? Have you ever seen, as an and again, and once again, have you ever seen David Price go into a fight and Tony, Tony Bell, you sit there and say, oh, I just don't know. I just don't see how Pricey wins. Never. He always backs his man. He always backs his aura. Always. And that's that's what I'm trying to say. That's, that's the key difference here. Rightly or wrongly, your family will always back you. Yes, you can be analytical to an extent, but... You're going to back your guy. Tony Bell, you and AJ, that's not your boy. I'm sorry. That's not your little brother. That's not. Not from what I've, And I'm shocked. Like, of course, certain people, like, as an example, David Hay. David Hay's not associated with AJ. David Hay's never pretended to, for, AJ, for AJ to be his little brother. I've seen Tony Bell, you and AJ acting all, acting like bro all brotherly in that. Really supporting each other. That's what I've seen before. In fact, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I've seen Tony Bell, you at AJ's fights, jumping off the, jumping off out of his seats. And I've seen AJ at Bellend fights, doing the same thing. Being proper invested. This, to me, I'm sorry, man. And ultimately, it comes down to, look, just, just look at how invested Tony Bell, you is in David Price. That's how he used to be with AJ, but now AJ's lost. He's, he's enjoying it too much, I'm sorry. Anyway, back to the point of the video. So, we've, we've, we've just discussed Turncoat talking about, oh yeah, I just don't know. I just don't see how AJ beats Ruiz. Like, what, what's that about? What? That there is, offers nothing constructive but to poke a man when he's down. Because before, a minute ago, you was talking about how AJ's in, unstoppable. Now, now you want to talk about, oh yeah, after what I've seen in New York, I'm no longer confident in anything. Oh yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know how AJ beats Ruiz. What is making out Ruiz is some indestructible beast. You, they're, just, they're exactly the same way that Tony Turnco used to talk about AJ, by the way. There's videos out there. In fact, I, was gonna, I might even play it in this video. 
the day before, June 1st, May 29th, I think it was, or two days before, go back and look. Go look. Go and look at Tony Bellew's interview on IFL TV on May 29th, yeah? Tony Belen, Tony Belen says, oh, yeah, this AJ versus Ruiz is 90-10 in AJ's favour. I just don't see how Ruiz can win. And now, all of a sudden, what after one loss, you're saying the opposite now. Does that sound to you like someone who's part of your team? Does someone change... I understand having an opinion. I understand being analytical. But that there is not an, a change in analytical opinion. That there is a bandwagon jump. When you go from saying AJ is 90-10, you don't, lo- you don't go from 90-10 to 1090 the other way from one performance he's doing it Tony Turncoat saying these things because he's really enjoying them he's enjoying t- talking down on AJ it fills him and I used to do it myself as I said before when AJ fought Vladimir Klitschko I was I'd sit there I was honestly hoping I was I was begging and praying for AJ to get beaten I really was I was really hoping for him to get beat I, I, I felt this deep this deep power inside me and when when the clitoris put him down, I, I, I was buzzing inside, and that's what Tony... I, I can talk about these things, because I know what's going through people's heads. The thought, just the mere talking about, like, I don't know, yeah, it's like almost like watching porn. Watching porn isn't the real thing. So, Tony Turncoat watching AJ get beat isn't... Well, no, wait, let me start again. Watching porn isn't the real thing. The real thing is the real thing, so AJ losing... Is AJ losing? But the the next best thing to that is talking about AJ losing. Does that make sense? Being so negative, it fills him with it fills him with with power and excitement. You can look at his eyes. He's loving it. He's loving the speculation. Oh, I just don't see how AJ can win. Oh, he's loving it. He's loving the idea that the guy he wasn't, the guy he will never be, is has become or who or who who now appears to be invincible. After oh sorry, appears to be um. I can't think of the word, but appears to be a human or whatever. Something that he wasn't. Or something that he is more. I'm getting confused. I'm, my words are all over the place, but you can probably understand what I'm trying to say. That's that part anyway. The last part is, and this this is the bit that gets me the most, I've got to be honest. He says, um, he goes, oh yeah, the only way that a, the only way that AJ can win, the only way I can see him doing it is if he does a Joseph Parker. Or is if he does a kind of performance that he does, that he did against Joseph Parker, and at that point I thought, okay, then well, maybe he's becoming more analytical now. Maybe he's giving more of a fair opinion. But then, and this is what I'm trying to say: you can't deny what I'm saying. You can't deny how much Tony Turncoat is enjoying hating, because any time he gives a positive statement, i.e., oh yeah, the only way I see AJ winning, even that's pretty negative. The only way. Is saying there's only one way he can win. But he says, oh, the only way I can see AJ winning is if he does a kind of performance like he did against Joseph Parker. And then he goes on to say, oh, but I don't even see him doing that because Ruiz doesn't allow you to do that. Ruiz punches when you, when you punch. So even then, he gives AJ one unit of hope. Oh, the one way he can beat him is if he does a Joseph Parker. And then he goes on to, he, then he goes, then he goes on to take away that one chance of hope. The only way he can do it is this way. Actually, he can't even do that because Ruiz punches with you. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, like I keep saying, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Tony Turncoat was like this all the way through. The reason he gets ter- called a turncoat, the reason he gets called a bandwagon don, isn't because of this opinion. As I keep saying, people like Carl Froch or David Hay or whatever, they've had a, they've had a pretty standard opinion of AJ. They think he's a bit stiff or they think he's a bit chinny or whatever, that's fine. If you have an opinion and it's consistent, that's fine. But don't go from talking about how you're AJ's brother, how AJ's family to you and all this business, and then he loses one fight and you're talking about how you can't see him winning at all. You give him one chance of hope, but then take it away and say, oh, he can't even do that. And you say, oh, yeah, after what, I've, after how I've seen AJ lost in New York, I, 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 I wow. <laughs> After how I've seen AJ lose in New York, I'm no longer confident in anything I see anymore. All this business. I just think it's turncoatish, man. Bandwagon Don. Exposed. I don't care what no one says. From what I've seen, this guy's in a 180. And I'd be, I'd be intrigued to see. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just surprised. I thought, but like I keep saying, how I've seen Tony Bellend deal with Pricey and Chisora. That's the kind of passion and love and support I was expecting. 
Win, lose or draw. Gets knocked out a million times by bums. Pricey does. Chisora, not much better. And Tony Turncoat's there, back to back, always backing them. Always supporting them. AJ has one loss and my man's nowhere to be seen. My man, all of a sudden, can't see AJ winning a fight now. Even, and to not being funny, as I'm not even close with AJ. All of us fans, we're not even close with AJ. Most of us, in fact, pretty much all of us, haven't even met him. Do you understand? And we're people that haven't even met him, and we can sit here and say, you know what, win, lose or draw, we're backing you. We, be we believe you can find a way. We believe you'll do it. You've got Tony Turncoat, who's met AJ many times, spent probably quite a lot of time together, probably gone out e eating together and whatnot, meeting each other's families, probably. And this guy, he can't, he can't see a way how AJ wins. I mean, like I keep saying, if it was David Price, even if he was fighting, I'm pretty, in fact, I know this for a fact, when David Price fought Povetkin, where there literally was no way he was going to win, Tony, Tony, Turncoat, Tony Turncoat didn't say that. Tony Bellen was sitting there saying, yep, he can do it. I know he can. He's only got to catch him once. He can do it. You see what I'm trying to say? Where's that, where's that same attitude when it comes to AJ? And I'm not being funny. AJ beating Ruiz... It's a lot easier to be optimistic about that than it is for to be optimistic about Price beating Povetkin. So I'm thinking, if you're that much of a friend to AJ, and you found a way to be positive about Povetkin and Price, how can you all of a sudden ha have no hope and no optimism for AJ versus Ruiz? I'll tell you how. Because he's a definition of a turncoat. He's a man who enjoys the thought and the reality of AJ losing. Becoming more like him. Becoming more... Listen, we all know Tony Turncoat got levelled on the canvas versus Usyk. Levelled. That's how, that's how he finished his career. And he'd like the same for AJ. That's what it comes down to. He feels inadequate because he finished his career on his back with his legs in the air like a cheap hooker. That's the facts of it. And he's hoping now, he's sitting there hoping and praying that AJ goes out the same way. So then he can feel more, like, so he can feel more good about himself. Oh, you know what? Look at look how great AJ was. He went out on his back with his legs in the air like a cheap hooker, just like I did. That's what he's hoping for. And he's I'm sorry, but it didn't take much, did it, for the whole for the whole fracade about how much of a oh, AJ's my brother and all his business. It didn't take much for all that that big like what's the word? It, for that big fakery to fall down. It took one loss. One loss where AJ looked his worst and but Tony Bell you Tony Bell, you was off the bandwagon of his little brother. What happened to him being your little brother and all that business? <laughs> didn't, didn't take you long. Did, it wasn't that hard, was it? For you, to, for you to do a 180 split, where now you can't even see, where now four months out, you can't even see how he wins. Shocking. Turncoat. Bellend.